What's going on, everybody? Kwaku here. Today, I bring you Windows 365. In this video, basically what I'm gonna do is show you how to get access to it if you're a business for the most part, because it's not really for personal use. And then I'm gonna just show you just a few things with Windows 365, so let's jump in. This, like I said, is Windows 365. This is configured for Windows 365 for business or for enterprise. And you see the difference between the two is not too much other than some more integrated threat protection for the enterprise side. And there could be some other things. But the main important thing that I wanted to show in this part of the video is what options you have in terms of configuring a PC, a cloud PC. Now, going back, you remember I made a video on cloud PC, like the leaked name of cloud PCs, which is what we thought this was gonna be called, but it turns out Windows 365 is the name of the service, which puts Windows in the cloud, and the individual PCs that people run off of the service are called cloud PCs. So going through, you see that for business, you have between one and eight V CPUs. Um, I'm pretty sure these are cores, and then you go through and you get more options. Right now for the one CPU, it only limits you to two gigabytes of RAM and 64 storage. And if they say, they says here, if you want that Windows hybrid benefit to save some money, uh, if you're running Windows 10 Pro on your primary work device, you can check that off. Um, but as you go higher up in the SKUs, you can see that the cost does go up and also the amount of storage that you get available to also goes up. So if I go to, for, to four, you see here that 128 and 16 is the base versus a two, that's the base for the one. Two vCPUs, four and eight is all the RAM that you get, eight being the max, up to 256 storage. And then you go up to four, eight CPUs rather, and then you get 32 gigs of RAM starting. You get 128 gigs storage up to 512 storage. So you see all of those things there that changes up. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty solid it's it seems to work pretty well um and then you see over here on this side too that some of the options change so like on two you see an option changes right there and that looks like it supports visual studio when you get to the eight i believe yep it supports visual studio this also supports visual studio so these two support the same thing they just have more um vcpu built in i'm sure those are cores like i said and so on as you go through, and these are like your basic people. Honestly, this I still don't see the point in this tier, the one vCPU. But I guess if you're just an office worker that's just doing basic, uh, basic office tasks, you probably don't need too much. But I'd still say the default should be about this two vCPUs. It gives you about 28 bucks a month, four, go, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 storage. Definitely never go to that. Start with 128 just to be safe. But that's essentially what I want to show you for the tiers of it. Um, and then when you go into the website itself, you see I have Windows 365, the website up. And basically when you come to this screen, basically your, the URL you're typing in after you signed up for a subscription is uh, windows365.microsoft.com. And then it brings you to this screen, which you saw during Panos' keynote. Um, and then you can click this to open it up in your browser once you have access to it and you've assigned user a user the license. Uh, to a cloud PC. I only have one license because I'm just one person. Um, so when you click open in browser, it opens up the cloud PC in the browser. So you know what? Let's actually see how it is in the browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into that segment in just a second. Alrighty. So now you see that obviously I was playing around with it earlier on a normal remote desktop on my Windows 11 PC. But now you see essentially we're already booted into it. You see how it looks like when you RDP or remote desktop uh, web into cloud PC, this cloud PC. So you can see I was looking at the various specs of it. You can see the various abouts for it and then teams and stuff is there. So there's a lot of things there and you can see another thing that I was actually testing out um, is Ori and the Blind Forest to see if games actually worked correctly for here. But the one thing that I was trying to test the most for it was uh, what GPU was actually running with this thing, but it won't show you what GPU was running because when you click it, and you go to display under your system information, uh, obviously you're just running Microsoft Hyper-V, so you're not gonna find out what uh, display, what GPU is actually running in the background. If someone knows a lot about command line and can help me find out what GPU is running or how I can find out, 
please send me an email nextgenwindows at gmail.com or just leave a comment because I would love to find out what GPU is running behind this cloud PC. So you can see my configuration is the four vCPUs, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage. So I went ahead and installed uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps and also Nair Automata. Um, and none of those games run well at all. Like you, they don't even load correctly. They're very slow because it's just not dedicated GPU. It doesn't run well at all. So I'm not even going to show that. But what I will show here is I'll go to the settings here and you can see the specs for it. Um, you can see it's a Xeon Platinum 8272 CL CPU with 2.6 gigahertz. Um, you can see device name, the RAM. You can see I'm running Windows 10 Enterprise version 21H1. 21H2 um, is pretty much out now, but you can see I'm running that now. Um, and that's about it. I did have to update some things. And the funny thing with this too, is that you can in fact go into the windows insider program with this as well. So if I go here and let's say I go to update the windows insider program is here. And if I wait for it to load, it says to manage your insider insider program device for your device, allow it and your windows to stay in the insider program. You need to turn on uh, optional diagnostic data. So if I click that and then I say, turn it on and then I go back to the Windows Insider program stuff, I could actually sign up for the Insider program on this cloud PC, which is hilarious, but it, it works. So that's another thing that works really well, I guess. I'm not gonna try it, obviously, because this video would take the rest of the day to record, but that's a feature that works. Other than that, there's a lot of pretty much the same. Um, a few things I wanted to change, I wanted to show you guys it's different. Um, so you go to this PC, you can see that for some reason it still says floppy disk drive. And I, I don't know why this three and a half floppy A is still there. Obviously my storage is 128 gigabytes of RAM or 27, but I've installed two games. So of course it's eaten up the storage. And then you can also uh, remote desktop virtual drive on RD web client. You can see what um, drives are being used. If I click that, you can see that it's gonna try to open it up and it's gonna show the cloud drive that I'm using. Now, if you open up cloud PC on your desktop with the RDP client, uh, you can actually access your desktop's folders in it and you can drag and drop between the two, which is pretty nice. Uh, so that's a pretty cool thing that you do. Obviously OneDrive, if you have OneDrive set up, you can use your OneDrive off like stuff that you have. It says set up OneDrive right there. Um, there's not too much different. Now, one other thing that I did post in my community for this channel is the speed test because Microsoft said that the nice thing about cloud PC is that uh, other than your connection to that server, that data center, which for me, it's literally probably like 10 miles away from here is a Microsoft data center. Um, your internet speed that you're getting for download speed on the cloud PC is the data center's internet speed. So as you can see, some of my history that I tested, uh, I have a lot of speed. It is two gigabits essentially. Um, so if I hit start, this is me recording um, my screen and everything like that, just hit start. Let's see what happens. So service unavailable says cannot perform the speed test right now. Sometimes that happens. And you can see now it's working and now you can see it's boosting up and it's going even higher. It's gonna go 2.3, yep. And that's pretty much the norm that I've been getting is 2.3, um, 2.339, whereas my highest was 2.2358. So you can see the speed up and down speed is really solid. You can do everything that you need to do on this thing. Nothing is going to lag other than the latency of your mouse. But for me, the latency is actually not bad. So if you're probably, honestly, I would say there's some options maybe that you could do. I can't think of just yet. Um, that you could probably do with this as long as you use the free trial for two months that you have if you have a um, office enterprise or microsoft 365 enterprise like i have so there's there's not too much to show in this um it's windows 10 it's windows 10 enterprise there's enterprise stuff in it your man it's a managed enterprise thing you're gonna go into your microsoft 365 admin center as you can see up here uh, i'm in my microsoft 365 admin center i'm not in my cloud pc and you can see that you just manage it just like anything else. So you can see, welcome me. Um, if I want to locate my licenses and stuff, I can probably just go to billing and I can go to licenses 
and see what's there and I can see all the options I have and you can see I have one assigned license out of one for my organization and you can see it's Windows 365 business for vCPU and the specs of the thing uh, with Windows hybrid benefit so again it's pretty straightforward in terms of if you are an admin of your company or whatever it is if you're an IT admin you'll know how to use this admin center way more than I do in fact I'd love to learn from you um, you'll know how to exactly use this but the main thing that you need to take away from this video is that um, you can easily get into Windows 365 by going to windows 365.microsoft.com um, and if you want to sign up for it you can just go go to Microsoft's website and honestly just type in Windows 365 or Google search it and you'll see that it's there and then you can choose the plan that you want signing with your enterprise credentials um, you got to make sure you have the right uh, role available for you to, to sign up for new things and then you can assign it like what you normally assign uh, things like office to other of you people in your employees so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below it's kind of rough uh, but this is just the first look of Windows 365. I gotta, I gotta come together and organize my thoughts a little bit more on what I really wanna prove, what maybe someone isn't thinking about before Lioness does it especially. Um, one last thing before I go to, one of the main things I wanna accomplish hopefully by Thursday's video, if not a random upload tomorrow is gaming on Windows 365. The problem we reach is that the GPU is not dedicated, so gaming is not going to work right, and it's a Xeon, Intel Xeon um, CPU as well, so gaming is not meant for server-grade CPUs, it's meant for traditional ones, so I'll find out what I can find out with gaming. I tried Doom Eternal, it didn't even boot. I tried Ori and the Will of the Wisps, it was so slow loading into the game's menu that it didn't do much, I had to exit. Um, I haven't tried Nair, but I'm sure it's going to suck too. So we'll sign, we'll find out. I'll find out and I'll let you guys know in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think about Windows 365. Um, if you're an IT admin, or you, you think it's a good idea that you might want to implement it, let me know in the comment section below. My name is Kwaku, and we are getting close to, I think it's 13 or 1400 now. So thank you all and take care.